Unless you've been living under a rock, you recognize the confident and iconic styling of a Porsche's flagship track tackling sports car, the 911. And these little land missiles were built to tear up the turns at the racetrack or to get you from the driveway to the office comfortably. Whatever it is you plan to do with your 911 Carrera, or if you can get your hands on the ultra rare RS America, which is a out pretty much impossible these days, you gotta watch this vid. We're gonna tell you about all the different Porsche 911 models and dig into which ones bring the most firepower and which ones need to be double inspected and which ones you can buy today and sell tomorrow for a profit. Here's everything that you need to know before buying a Porsche 911. Let's go. <laughs> It's one of the most iconic and easily identifiable cars on the road. Other than a, well, loose resemblance to the Volkswagen Beetle, there's absolutely no mistaking the incredible Porsche 911 Carrera for any other car. I mean, just look at this thing. Seriously, you guys, those hips, this rear end, oh, I absolutely love it. Give it a Nobel Prize, baby. Okay, aren't Nobel Prizes for like books and stuff? It's also one of the best performance cars out there, period. Providing limitless levels of driver engagement and of course, that prestige that enthusiasts just want out of a Porsche. And yes, they still offer that manual transmission, which if you wanna save the manuals, go check out our limited edition Ideal T bestseller. And for those of you that don't want to row your own gears, they have the record shattering PDK dual clutch gearbox. That's still a wonderful choice. Porsche dropped the first 911 back in 1964 and fixed it up with an air-cooled rear-mounted engine behind the rear axle. What were they thinking? And yet somehow that platform lasted over 50 years and spawned hundreds of limited editions and of course a couple RSR race cars that snagged the crown. It even paved the path for the 935 Turbo, which is just straight manic. And that puppy took home the trophy in the 1979 Le Mans. This car is truly the granddad of gravel gripping, G-force pushing performance automotives. I think I just dented like the hood a little bit. And I think most of us know today that the 911 is still a great buy because enthusiasts appreciate its pedigree, precision, driver engagement, reliability, and not to mention incredible value. Everyone knows that when you buy a Porsche, you expect it to stick to the highest possible standards. And they're really way up here. And I'm the first to admit that everybody has their own perception of a Porsche owner. European midlife crisis mobile. But I think that those people that judge just don't really know what it's like to be in one of these sleek speedsters and what bang for buck they provide that most of the luxury class just can't really touch. You can't touch this. Just about every iteration of the Porsche 911 in the last decade has appreciated significantly. And that bubble is not gonna burst anytime soon. And if you wanna learn how to buy a Porsche like a pro, go check out the Ideal Car Strategies. And for the longest time, Porsche was rolling out air-cooled 911s from 1964 all the way until 1998. And you got the OGs, the originals, the 911E, the 911L, the S and T models. And these are all ideal cars that Brad Danger himself would absolutely keep in my stable. And of course, people love these old 911s because of their age and history. But as far as driving dynamics go, they aren't really all that impressive. Well, yes, they are probably pretty good for their age. I would still say a well-tuned Ferrari like the 365 would eat the Porsche's lunch. And if I can take you guys back to 1973, that brought the Carrera RS, one of my favorite cars of all time. And the RS stands for something extremely special, Rennsport. And that means race sport in the oh so scary language of German. And that RS was built with a larger 2.7 liter engine over the standard Carrera. And it got go fast bits like mechanical fuel injection, bigger brakes, wider wheels and tires, those huge wide and rear hips, and of course, that essential race stiff suspension. And then just a couple years later in 1975, we were first introduced to the Widowmaker the 930 Turbo. And with this model, Porsche hopped onto the turbocharging trend and the 911 waved goodbye to the naturally aspirated motor. And this upgrade gave the 930 an impressive 260 horsepower, which was pushed through its four-speed manual transmission. Yeah, thing is still pretty old. You know, like old school, but like old school cool. Because this thing had the in-your-face rear spoiler 
known as the whale tail. And then when we fast forward to 1989, when the 964 came out, it was the most futuristic modern facelift of the 911 that Porsche had ever done. Now this design, in my opinion, has aged like fine wine and still looks stunning even today. But did you know just 10 or so years ago, this was like the least sought after air-cooled model ever. And you could pick these things up all day long for the low 20, stupid planes. And now you're not even touching one for at least double, if not triple that price. And I think that that's what the 996 911s are gonna be doing in the next couple of years, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Because the 964, not only looked the part, but had a beast under the hood, a 3.6 liter air-cooled boxer motor. And then in 1990, its big brother would join the lineup, the Turbo, which is one of the most badass air-cooled 911s ever built and helped solidify that the 964 is one of the most popular generations of 911 ever. And year after year, they continue to impress me with how much they continue to appreciate. But the 964 wasn't done with that Turbo. Oh no, they also had the RS and RS America models. And these equally as slick whips are well worth into the six figures today. Yeah, nothing to snooze about. And I have a feeling that they're gonna continue to appreciate because there was only 701 RS Americas shipped to US soil. And finding an RS America, which is one of my ideal cars, especially one that is somewhat affordable, is about as easy as finding the actual Lucky Charms guy at the end of the rainbow, yeah ain't gonna happen. But that doesn't mean that I, I should stop looking, right? Because these things just look sick. Now the 964 would eventually give birth to its predecessor, the 993 in 1994. And love it or hate it, it is a beautiful baby. And it's even more modern looking and just as gorgeous as the 964. And when a lot of people think air-cooled Porsche, they think the 993. And that's probably why this model is fetching massive sums of money today. And just about every single Porsche enthusiast on this planet respects them. And of course, they came out with a turbo. I don't know if I'd get the 964 RS America or the 993 Turbo instead, which if you wanna check out me absolutely ripping one, check out this ideal vid up here. Ugh. I love that car. And those 993 turbos are $100,000 plus all day long. And even the least loved base Carrera model in the ugliest color combination that you could possibly imagine is still fetching at least $50,000 in decent shape. And then Porsche did something drastic. They made the jump from the air-cooled to the water-cooled after the 993. And it was partly because they had exhausted all the performance they could get out of an air-cooled, and they were also fighting off bankruptcy and had to mass produce the Porsche 911. And so desperate times call for desperate measures. And they built the 996. That is the ugly forgotten grandchild that no one wants to hear about in the Porsche family. Porsche is an engineering firm first. You know, Porsche design. They make clothes, they make furniture, Heck, they even do architecture. And Porsche is competitive, so they don't wanna be left behind their competitors. And the water-cooled engine was necessary to keep up with those cheeky car crafters over at Ferrari. And this water-cooled flat six really changed how much they could push their new boxer motor. And what they gained in performance, they kind of lacked in noise and character. Naturally, water-cooled engines just don't sound as badass as air-cooled. But Porsche was really doing something extreme with the 996. And that's why I love it so much because they didn't just push the envelope and piss off a ton of enthusiasts with the water-cooled engine, but they also did something really interesting with their design. I think it goes without saying that this is one of the best rear ends on any Porsche really ever. It is so iconic, it's so classic, and as we come around those big wide hips and that 911 silhouette until you get to, oh, come on, Porsche, what were you thinking? Let's talk about these headlights. Yeah, Porsche with the 996 is known for those ugly duckling headlights. And on the 996.1s, they may or may not look like egg yolks. And this is a 996.2 with the upgraded headlights. And I, uh, I mean, I'm learning to love, right? But as you can see here, there is that circle that's been around since 1964. And then they added this, which actually is a throwback to the Porsche GT1 race car. So yeah. These are race car lights, but that's not the only place that Porsche kind of screwed up. Let's uh, take a look at the interior. This interior is a little bit awkward. It hasn't aged very well, and it looks a little bit like a 90s Taurus. Yeah, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not really their best effort or 
or maybe it was. Yes, yeah, some of the design language on the interior as well as the exterior draws a little bit of mockery from Porsche purists, but as a result, these have not really started to appreciate until recently. And so that's why I bought one and I kind of like it. And like I said before, my dad's always told me, you can learn to love. And I'm, I'm actually learning to love the 996. And if you're someone that's trying to buy the deal, well, there's no better deal than a 996 911. And it's easily the most accessible way to get into one of the best sports cars of all time. Because make no mistake whatsoever, this Porsche drives like a Porsche. It sounds like a Porsche because it is a Porsche 911. And the best part is that these are actually fairly easy to maintain, both on the pocketbook as well as there's a lot of stuff you can do it yourself, except it was plagued with one thing called the IMS RMS LOL. It is a pretty big problem and this car actually had the issue happen. Yes, that's why it now has a four liter. It should have a 3.6 liter in it, which I'm not complaining at all. The car is way too much fun to drive now, but it did cost about $25,000 for a new motor. And so if I could give you one piece of advice when buying the 996 is that if the IMS has not been addressed, get that fixed immediately. Don't screw around, drive it straight to the repair shop and get it done. But don't be turned off by this gen because although this fix is a matter of life or death, it won't cost you an arm and a leg to do it. And once that IMS has been taken care of, mm, you're gonna have a bunch of 911 motoring bliss. And the 996 will be just as reliable as any other generation 911, which they're actually, this is my third one and it's really reliable. And a guy can never have too many Porsche 911s because well, I also have a 997-911 in the stable. And although it might only be two years newer than this 04 C4S 996, it drives like it's 20 years newer. It's a much more modern iteration of the 911 Carrera. And don't get me wrong, this car is awesome, but it drives a lot more like a G-body or an air-cooled. And the 997, it's really the last of the analog cars, but it just feels a lot more contemporary inside and out. So you got the 997 generation that goes back to those oval headlights, and then you got the 991 gen and the brand spanking new 992. And every single one of these generations of this incredible car can put the hammer down at the racetrack, as well as keep that eaten grin on your face as you drive to work. The 911 is one of the most pure driving experiences ever. And right now, there's very little variance between a minty air-cooled and a modern version. And remember how earlier I was talking about how Porsche would come out with the turbo cars like the 1975 or the 993? In 2017, they decided to turbocharge literally everything with the 991.2. And yes, they completely eliminated that naturally aspirated Boxer 6. And with that, performance metrics were hiked up significantly. But it did come at a cost. That mechanical Sonata that those regular flat six had, well, they went away. And it was replaced with something like this. Yeah, it's kind of muffled, gruff grumble that maybe reminds you of a Subaru? I guess pour one out for the long lost purr. But the 992 came out in 2020. And yes, it's a stunning feat of technology and engineering, no doubt about it. But I feel like every new generation has lost a little bit of that passion over the years. You see, the Porsche 911 is special for a variety of reasons. And being a presenter for a YouTube channel, I should probably be driving something like a Mark IV Supra or one of those Subaru STIs. But no, I drive a Porsche 911. And there's a very good reason for that. Not only is it an amazing driving car that can pull in a straight line, regardless of the humble horsepower numbers, but it's also one of the most capable Canyon carvers and will shatter records at most technical tracks around the world. And that's even stock. Plus it's one of the only cars of this caliber that won't kill your wallet on maintenance. And I don't know how they do it because these are pretty mass produced cars, but they just don't really suffer from the depreciation curve. If you're looking to buy a Porsche 911 right now, there's pretty much a limitless number of them on the market at just about every price point. If you're looking to spend 20 grand or less, you're looking at a 996-911, which is not a bad view. But if you're looking for more of a waterfront property and your budget is a little less restricted, you could also get yourself into something that's a little bit more track focused like the 996 GT3, which is easily the most accessible of the GT3s today. And it's still a hardcore track scorching monster that is gonna continue to go up in value. Really the only risk here with the 996 is that you'll have some purists scoff at you and tell you that your headlights are ugly or you know that your interior looks like a 90s Taurus, which they're not 
wrong. Well, at least with the interior. But don't listen to those guys because it's still a legit 911. And for those of you looking for a 911 that is a good investment, look no further than the 993 or the 964. Of course, the more that you can afford, the better. But the turbo and RS models are easily the most sought after right now. A super clean turbo variant is probably the most recession proof. But if the past year has any indication on Porsche prices, they're pretty much all pandemic proof. And yes, especially for the 991 and 992, they're still depreciating quite a bit, but those are absolutely bulletproof daily drivers. And a lightly used modern Carrera S or 4S would be a great pickup for a certified pre-owned. And if you're looking to enjoy long-term ownership, you're looking to pick up a sports car for a decade or so, I really can't suggest a better car than a Porsche 911 from 1964 to 2021. They are what every other manufacturer judges themselves on. And I think we all know that comparable cars have major issues that have a serious effect on the long-term longevity of the car, but not the 911. These bad boys are easier to own than a fidget spinner, especially if you're fidgety. No, seriously, they're low maintenance, they look incredible, and every generation, for some reason, the values just over time keep climbing. Believe it or not, a few years ago, European banks were legitimately recommending their customers invest in a classic Porsche 911 to protect their liquid cash. And hey, I'm no financial analyst. I'm a car guy, just like you. But if the banks are telling people to invest in a super fun, super stylish German sports car, I'd probably at least give it some consideration, wouldn't you? So there you go. Everything that you need to know about buying a Porsche 911. Drop us a comment below and let us know which generation is your ideal 911. And let us know the specs that you want. Carrera, S, Turbo, GT car. Let us know down below. I'm Brad Danger. This is Ideal. Hit that subscribe if you're new. Turn on the notification bell. And as always, keep living the ideal lifestyle.